<laughs> well, we're not going to start in legs up. Okay. We're going to get to that. Yeah, do you have enough with the controls? You're not. Okay, good, good. And then, yeah, good. Okay. All right. So start um, in a seated position. So if you're comfortable crossing your legs, start like that and back against the wall might be nice <laughs> for a little support. Um, or if uh, I know Karen prefers hero pose and Karen, turn your blocks the other way. Yeah, so that your seat, yeah. And you could do hero's pose, whichever you're comfortable with. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> it's not a good day already. No, no. Every day is a good day here. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. All right. So, and then did you bring your band with you? And you have blocks? Yes. Okay. Two blocks, the band. Okay. All right, wonderful. Oh, yay. I'm so excited that this is going to work out. <laughs> so today's theme is the keys to peace. Mm. I don't have the keys. I'm just passing on what <laughs> I'm just going to pass on what I've learned from yogis that have come before us. <laughs> But I love this teaching and I've been pondering it for like six weeks now. Um, call it, I don't know, FOMO <laughs> or social media, too much social media. I have to, um, somehow I volunteered to do social media for my son's school and also for his BMX sport. So it like puts me on it, you know? Yes. Right. And then Next thing I know, too much. Too much. And uh, this has been a just a crazy month for me, activity-wise, and so a lot of chatter. I came Monday, right, and I was like, "Oh my God, help me get the chatter." So this practice, just you know, it it's something to turn to to help get through moments in daily life that just get a little much. So the locks and keys come from Yoga Sutra, chapter one, number 33. So just find your seat, find a tall spine. So if you can not sit where you're slouching a little bit, sit up nice and tall, either have the legs in crisscross and find that tall spine. So lift your spine up a little bit, scoot your, scoot your sacrum toward the wall. Yeah, so that you're, you don't feel that roundedness. And sit up nice and tall. Yeah. Bring the hands to the knees and just close the eyes, soften the gaze. Take a deep inhale through the nose, sigh it out through the mouth. Another one, inhale through the nose. <sighs> Flip your left palm to face up, bring the index finger and thumb to touch. <laughs> And then with your right hand, drop your thumb into your palm with your second, third, fourth, fifth fingers. Just begin to lightly tap your sternum right in the middle of the heart space. And just inhaling and exhaling with your natural breath. Just this light tapping as I talk about this sutra. So in Sanskrit, Patanjali outlines, outlines the four locks. Sukha, meaning happy people. Dukkha, meaning unhappy people. Punya, the virtuous. Apunya, not so virtuous. 
And then he gives us the four keys to these locks. Keys you can think of as attitudes. In Sanskrit, maitri, which means friendliness or loving kindness. Karuna, compassion. Mudita, delight. Upeksha, disregard or equanimity. And then Swami Satchitananda translates this sutra. He says, by cultivating attitudes of friendliness toward the happy, compassion for the happy, sorry, for the unhappy, delight in the virtuous, and disregard toward the wicked, the mind stuff retains its undisturbed calmness. I especially like this quote from a yogi, Matt Kahn, says, peace is not of the world, for I am the peace within it. It just seems to tie in nicely with this sutra because as Swami Satchitananda explains that if we can cultivate the attitudes to redirect the negative, we invite in more calmness, the mind stuff, the chatter, calms. So think about that for a minute. If you see a happy person, instead of being jealous, can you extend friendliness? If you see an unhappy person, instead of, say, feeling sorry for them or thinking that I'm so glad I'm not in that position, can you extend compassion? Perhaps a person who just seems to be volunteering for everything, <laughs> doing good all the time. Can you be happy for that? <laughs> Can you delight in their virtuousness and just then delight in what you do? And then there's the person that makes you angry. Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking of them as wicked, can you invite in equanimity? Can you disregard? Can you not attach? So these locks and keys, this is what we're going to meditate on today. Slow down your tapping. Bring that right hand down to the right knee. Bring index finger to thumb. So we're going to open and close today's practice with meditation. So just a brief one minute silent meditation here at the start just to feel the effects of that tapping. Feel any sensations. If a thought comes into your mind, acknowledge it and then let it pass. Come back to bringing your focus to the breath.
from your hands to your heart center. Actually, place your right hand over your heart, left hand over the right. See if you can feel the pulsating of your heart for a couple of breaths. And then invite in your intention. So if there was one lock or key that resonated with you, one or the pair, set your intention toward that lock or key or lock and key. And flicker the eyes. Actually, let's do one ohm. So before opening the eyes, inhale, exhale the breath out. Ohm. Are the eyes open. So I want you to turn to bring your back onto the mat, your feet against the wall and form a 90 degree angle with your legs. So feet brace on the wall. Hopefully they don't mind if I get my feet on the mirror. <laughs> so you're creating a 90 degree angle with your knees. Feet against the wall, arms come alongside, palms face down. Let your shoulders relax. So, Mary, no, not legs up, 90, oh. de 90 degrees. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so your feet are against the wall. Okay. Make a 90 degree angle with your knees. So you're pushing yourself away from the wall. Yeah. And then have your feet separated. Straighten yourself up. Yeah, there you go. So forming a beautiful brace, really, of your feet. So you've got that 90 degree angle. If you feel that your knees are coming toward your chest, then you need to scoot away from the wall a little bit. So yeah, so both of you scoot a little bit away from the wall so that you've got that 90 right. degrees. Mm -hmm. So the knee is in line with the hips. Cow and cat against the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's just a tilting up of the pelvis, pelvis and a tucking under. So it's, you're keeping your feet against the wall and your arms, move your arms a little bit away from your body, palms down. So you've got that as your support. And then imagine just like in cow and cat. So your exhale is gonna match that cat, that tucking of the pelvis of the tailbone. And your inhale, you're tilting the pelvis so that you feel a little bit of arch in your back. So not really lifting the hips off the mat, just the pelvis is tilting and tucking. You see how you're able to isolate that without lifting the hips off the mat. So continue moving with your breath. So the exhale, you feel your whole back pressing against the mat as you're kind of tucking the tailbone under. And then the inhale, an arch forms in the middle of your back as you tilt the pelvis forward. Exhale, tuck the tailbone under. So your pubic bone is sort of then rounding up the back on the mat, and then inhale. So imagine cow, feel that chest opening a little bit as you tilt the pelvis toward the mat. 
Exhaling into cat. And inhale into cow. Hopefully feeling engagement in the lower abdominal muscles. Subtle, but it's there. Continue moving with the breath. Couple more rounds. Finishing up with what would be cat. And then draw the knees into your chest. Hug them in, lift your forehead up to your knees. Rock from side to side, feel that massage for the sacrum. And then roll onto your right side. Take a breath there. And then press yourself up to a seat. Cross the legs, or sorry, cross the ankles, rock forward to tabletop, traditional tabletop. And a few rounds of cow and cat here, just to bring some connection to what we just did. So draw the belly in, feeling that engagement. Inhale, lifting the crown of the head, tilting the tailbone up. And exhale, round the spine, tuck your tailbone under, push the earth away from you. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. And then push your seat to your heels with that rounded back. Inhale, lift up on your knees, float the arms overhead, palms touch. Exhale, back to tabletop, right into cow on your inhale. Your exhale is into cat. Keep that rounded spine. Push your seat toward your heels and then inhale, float up to standing on your knees. And exhale into tabletop. Tuck your toes under. Lift your shins and knees off the mat about an inch. And then push your low belly to your top to your thighs. Slowly begin to straighten the legs, find downward facing dog. Pedal out your dog by dropping one heel of one leg and then bend the knee of the other leg. Look between your hands. Walk your feet up to the top of your mat. And then inhale to a half lift. Find a flat back. Bend your knees, float the arms out to the side, and then lift with a flat back. Straighten the legs, arms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center, to dasana. Now we're going to do downward dog at the wall. Find a space. So find. Face the wall, bring your feet hip distance apart. So start there, find symmetry. If your feet are proning out, turn them in so your toes are facing the wall. And then bring your hands to the wall. Walk your feet out as you lower your hands. So probably I've got a short stature, so my base of my palms are gonna come right above this uh, board. And you wanna find a 90 degree angle. Okay. Or your hands might place on that board. So not leaning, and we don't wanna lean, you wanna form a 90 degree angle like this. So we're pushing 
our sit bones and our hips toward the middle of the room. You're trying to look down lower. Push your hips here. Yeah, there. Beautiful. So head is between the arms. Your arms are like downward dogs. So maybe they're a little bit wider than your shoulders. You want to be pushing in to the wall enough, not too hard, but enough to find that 90 degree stretch. Another five breaths here. See where you can find a little bit more space. We're working toward getting the rounding out of the spine. And just like we do when we're in downward dog, it's a full extension of our spine and our arms. Opening the shoulders. So the neck, so in downward dog, we have a tendency of scrunching our shoulders up toward our neck. So here we're fully extended. One more full inhale. And exhale. On your inhale, lift your gaze, start walking your feet in closer to the wall. And then turn to have your back against the wall. Find Tadasana. Let's pause here for a few breaths. Heels can be against the wall. Just use the whole support of the wall. Close the eyes. Really root down through the feet. Let any effort go in the arms. Feel the shoulders move away from the ears. Full breath in. Full breath out. And then open the eyes again and watch me. So the next thing we're going to do against the wall is basically pyramid pose. So you know how we're here in pyramid pose on our mats, both feet facing forward on two different planks of wood. And then we hinge forward. So then we're going to use the wall for this pose today. So come to the wall, bring your feet back, just like you were doing in downward dog. Make sure you're on two different planks of wood. And then step the left foot in a little bit, step the right foot back a little bit, and then hinge forward. Finding that 90 degree angle, finding this, some folks I've read where they call it a half triangle, forward, forward facing triangle. So the legs are straight. Full extension of the legs and then lower down. Push back. So the hips are still moving toward the center of the room. The hips are even. So then your sacrum is level. So you push the hips toward the ground. Back this way and lower. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, nice. 
breathe in, breathe out. Beautiful opening for our hamstring muscle and our hip flexor. One more full inhale and exhale on this side. And then we'll switch sides. So bring that right foot to meet the left. And then move that left foot back, lower it. Toes facing the wall. Your head between the arms. Full breath in. Full breath out, feeling that stretch for the hamstring muscles, the hip flexors. And then bring that left foot to meet the right, come to the wall, back against the wall again, taking a pause into Dasana. <laughs> That's a good stretch. And then grab your band, your loop. Bring your thumbs inside the loop like this. Everybody feel like it's tight enough? Yeah. Reach your band to the middle of the room and then draw your arms back into the shoulder sockets. Reach forward, draw the arms into the sockets. Reach forward, draw the arms into the sockets. One more, reaching forward. Draw the arms into the socket. So I want you to, we're going to do it one way and then the other. So reach forward and now lift the arms overhead. Notice where your shoulders are. Come back down, draw the arms into their sockets and now lift the arms overhead. Notice any difference? <laughs> so in downward dog, a lot of times we're out here going into and then we scrunch our shoulders up. If we draw our arms into our sockets, we create more space and opening. So overhead again, and then we're gonna flow. Exhale, hands down, strap to the thighs. Inhale, the arms overhead. Exhale to the thighs. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale. So notice if the shoulders are creeping up to the ears when they go overhead, if you can soften, draw them away. Exhale, down to the thighs. One more time, overhead, keep them there. And then we're gonna add a side bend. Lengthen, side bend over to the left. Holding there for five. Try pressing into the right foot. And see if you notice any difference in the side bend as you 
ground down a little bit more in that right foot. The right arm reaching maybe a little bit more and continue to use the thumbs to separate that loop to help you lengthen. Breathe into this whole right side. Try and keep the arms in line with the ear so that you're not collapsing in the side bend, but you're keeping that length. Inhale through center, pause. And exhale over to the right. So keep the arms in line with your ears. So up here. Yeah. <laughs> so you might not go into the side bend as much, but it's better to keep them up here and then go into the side bend. And now press into that left foot a little bit. Notice how that might shift it for you. One more full inhale. And then exhale to center, lower the arms to the thighs. Bring this loop behind you. Thumbs come on the inside. So make sure your feet are still into the asana, that you have symmetry. So feet, toes facing forward. So this now opens our heart. So the thumbs on the inside of the loop separate the loop as you can, as best you can, draw the shoulder blades toward each other, feel the chest lift and open, shoulders opening, maybe chin drops toward chest. If that's uncomfortable for the neck, then leave it where the chin is parallel. Everybody feeling that in the chest and the shoulders? Full breath in, full breath out, full breath in. See if the shoulders can move away from the ears just a little bit more. Shoulder blades drawing toward each other in the back as if you have a pencil that you're holding between the shoulder blades. And exhale, release the strap, roll out the shoulders. I feel like you have a new set of shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> and then reverse the direction. All right, grab your blocks. Place your blocks against the wall on an angle. Like that. Everybody see? So, yeah, like Darlene. So, Darlene, raise your hand. <laughs> use the baseboard. Use the baseboard. Mm -hmm. And then come with your feet against or heels facing the blocks, face the front of the room, middle of the room. Come into forward fold, walk your hands out in front of you and then move your feet so your heels are pressing against the blocks, your toes and the balls of your feet on the mat. Find your downward dog, so move your hands out to a comfortable distance. So Mary, you can put more of your heel and the middle of your foot on the block to really use the blocks for the majority of your feet. What do you guys think about this? Oh, wow. <laughs> Different. I don't love it. <laughs> it's good, right? Do you feel like your hips are moving up toward the ceiling? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you feel more extension in your arms and spine? Okay. It's a beautiful way to do downward dog to have the focus being on spinal extension. Okay. 
Press into your thumbs, the index finger, and the third tips of the third, fourth, fifth fingers. And then drop your knees down to your mat. Sit back into child's pose. <laughs> Full breath in, full breath out, full breath in, full breath out. And then roll up to coming onto your heels, reach back for your blocks, bring them in front of you to tabletop. So then your hands are on your blocks, middle height, Knees are hip distance apart. Extend your right leg behind you. Draw the right knee into your chest and then step that right foot between the blocks. Tuck your left toes under. Lift your left knee. Finding our low lunge. It's a beautiful, gentle way to get into low lunge, right? So our hips wanna be low. We want full extension in the back leg in low lunge, and we want a 90 degree angle in this front knee. And now on your inhale, straighten your right knee, shift your hips back. This is extended pyramid. Exhale, rebend the right knee into low lunge. Exhale, straighten the right leg, extended pyramid. There's no movement with the left foot. Just rebend the right knee, come into low lunge. Exhale, straighten the right leg. That left heel might move toward the floor, but not dropping all the way down. Inhale into low lunge and exhale into extended pyramid. Inhale, as you come in a low lunge, bring the heart space forward. As you exhale into extended pyramid, maybe the head drops toward the right leg. One more, inhale, low lunge, shine the heart forward. Exhale, extended pyramid. Finish in low lunge, drop the left knee down, uncurl the toe, inhale, float the arms up on Johnny Asana. Everybody with me, too hard or okay? Doing okay? Good. Full breath in, full breath out. Exhale, hands to the block and then bring that right knee to meet the left. Tabletop. Extend left leg behind you. Draw the left knee into your chest. Step that left foot forward in between the blocks. Tuck the right toes under. Lift that right knee. Low lunge. Full extension. Really straighten that right leg. Left knee is bended at a 90 degree angle. You want to have a straight line from knee to ankle. Exhale the breath out. Inhale, I forget which I did. So uh, on our exhale, we straighten the left leg, extended pyramid. Inhale to low lunge, bending that left knee, shining the heart forward. Exhale, straighten the left leg, extended pyramid. Inhale, flowing with our breath. Exhaling into extended pyramid. And inhaling into low lunge. Exhale into extended pyramid. Maybe the head is moving toward that left leg. Inhale into low lunge. Shine the heart forward. Exhale, extended pyramid. 
Finishing in low lunge, drop the right knee down, uncurl that toe, float the arms up. Anjani Asana, breathing here, inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Bring the hands to the blocks, bring that left knee back to meet the right. Take the knees as wide as your mat, separating them out and then bring your toes to touch. Bring your toes toward each other in the back. Push your seat to your heels. Bring this block so it falls underneath your forehead. Coming into child's pose, wide-legged child's pose. Let the shoulders be soft. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and breathe out. Another full breath in, full breath out. Next, inhale, start to bring yourself up, propping yourself up on your hands. Bring the knees in closer, walk your hands out, drop your thighs, your hips, then bring your forearms to the mat, finding sphinx, sphinx pose. So for your alignment, you don't want your elbows to be out to the sides. You want your elbows under your shoulders. Wrap your fingers around your elbows to make sure that they're the correct distance apart. Then bring the forearms back to the mat. So Karen, move your forearms forward. So the elbows are under your shoulders. <laughs> bring your legs toward each other. Turn your pubic bone toward the mat so you're lengthening the low back. And then feel the energy move up the spine. Your gaze is looking just past your fingertips. Full breath in and out in this very mild back bend, more of a back extension, exploration of where we can feel the energy move from our toes up the spine, out to the crown of the head. Full breath in, full breath out. Full breath in. So feeling the chest really open here with your breath. And then slowly lower down, stack your hands and let your forehead rest on the backs of the hands. Bend at the knees. Feet are facing the ceiling. Slowly windshield wiper the legs from side to side. Feeling the neck release any tension. And then slowly stop the legs, extend them out onto the mat again, and then roll onto your back. So keeping your head right where it is, just roll over onto your back and grab your block or supported bridge. <laughs> so set up your alignment first. Knees facing the ceiling, feet on the mat, and then you want your heels to come toward your sits bone so that you can extend your arms and reach your heel with your longest finger. 
and then have your toes turned in toward each other a little bit so that your feet are in alignment with your knees and your hips. Grab your block at the lowest or the middle height. Press into your feet and slide the block under so it's supporting your sacrum, which is the bony part of the low back. So right across that low back and maintain that alignment with your feet and knees. So you don't want your knees flaring out. Beautiful, everyone. If you're used to lifting your back higher or bridge pose, then you can turn the block to the middle height. and let your back release into the support. So still though, a little bit of engagement in the thighs to maintain that alignment. A little bit of engagement in the glutes. And allow the breath to in your body. <coughs> Follow your inhales and exhales. <laughs> Feel the breath really open across the heart space and chest. Little light pressure in the back of the head and the back of the shoulder blades. Full breath in and out. Then press into your feet, remove the block. And then we're going to come a little closer to the wall to then extend our legs up the wall. So try and bring your sits bones toward the wall. They don't have to be against the wall. And then bring your legs up. If you want to slide a block under your sacrum, you can. Or just, and this is beautiful too, everyone. Barbara, you can see how her legs are on an angle. So you can be with your sacrum against forming a 90 degree angle. And if that's comfortable for you, wonderful. If not, your legs can be at an angle toward the wall. But try and find that extension. Let the arms come alongside your body. And turn the palms to face up. Take a deep breath in through the nose, sigh it out through the mouth. So legs up the wall, Vipariti Karani is a beautiful pose. You could do this pose every day, five minutes a day. It reverses the circulation in the legs, which then creates an opportunity to reset our nervous system. Letting the weight drain down from the feet through the legs, allowing our pelvis and hips to open more fully and freely. Tuning into the breath and inviting in a withdrawal of your
your other senses. So if you are noticing any sounds, bring your attention to the breath. If thoughts are coming into your mind, see if you can just acknowledge, but then bring your focus back to the breath. If there's any smells, acknowledge, but then come back to your focus being on your breath. Walk your feet down to bend the knees. And then walk your feet over to the right, coming into a twist. So keep the knees bent, just, you probably need to remove the block if you have one underneath your sacrum. And see if you can walk your feet all the way down to the baseboard so your knees are coming down to the floor. Bring the arms up a little bit so they're an extension of your extending out from your shoulders. Or cactus arms if that's comfortable. Palms face up to help the shoulder externally rotate. One more breath on this side. Your inhale, feel it gather in your belly and then walk your feet back up. Find that 90 degrees. Adjust as you need to, find neutral. And then walk your feet down to the left, coming into the twist on the other side. Finding cactus arms or the arms just extending out from the shoulders, palms up. Try not to have any tension in the shoulder. So if the arms are too high, try and lower them so that the shoulders can find some comfort against the floor. Couple breaths here. Walk the knees back up, find neutral. Hug the knees fully into your chest, give yourself a hug. And then roll to your right side, finding your way up to a seat. Finding your seat for meditation with your back against the wall. You can sit on a block if that helps with Sukhasana. You can find hero's pose. Finding this meditation seat, a seat you can comfortably be in for about five minutes. Legs can also be fully extended. Is that good? You're able to see, yeah. What about one for the heels? Heels with the pubic Side. Back to the wall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Tall spine.
Take a deep inhale through the nose, sigh it out through the mouth. So bringing back into mind these locks and keys, using them to meditate on. So the one that you used for your intention. Bring a person into your mind that challenges you. that creates the lock. And then using the matching key. So as you bring this image of this person into your mind, if it's happy person, extend friendliness or loving kindness. If it's an unhappy person, extend compassion. Virtuous, extend delight. Wicked or not so virtuous, extend disregard or equanimity. And just with each inhale and exhale, if you want to bring different people into mind or the same person, and just keep saying a statement of friendliness or compassion or delight. Or equanimity toward them. With each inhale and exhale. We find our ability to unlock in the breath. Swami Satchitananda says, remember 
Our goal is to keep the serenity of our minds. So this meditation tool to cultivate attitudes of friendliness toward the happy, compassion for the unhappy, delight in the virtuous, and disregard toward the wicked, the mind stuff retains its undisturbed calmness. A tool to help us maintain peacefulness through anything. By doing that, we're not only extending these good attitudes toward these people in our lives, but it's really an opportunity to extend it to ourselves. Bring your hands to your heart center. Take a full inhale. It's OM on the next exhale. Oh. Oh. A slight bow of the head forward toward your heart. Thank yourself for being open to these practices. For inviting in ways to find more calm into your life. Whatever you do for yourself, you're able to do for others. As always, an honor and a sincere privilege to lead you in this practice. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Grace. You're my favorite. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, while we have our legs on the wall like this, mm -hmm. we're suggesting uh, the music, the man that sings. Yeah. Is fabulous. Krish Krishna, Krishna Das. His, Krishna who? His name is Krishna Das. Krishna, Krishna K R I S H N A. Yeah. And then Das, D A S. Krishna. He's a very, very famous Kirtan singer. He travels all over the world. His voice is just oh, amazing. Just amazing. So yeah. He, who are my, who are my late seventies, eighties music fans. Me, me. Yeah, he was the lead singer for the Blue Oyster Cult. No, he was yeah, yeah, no way. Wow. yeah, That's yeah. yeah. That's wow. Right. And then he found this path <laughs> into yoga and went to India and, and that place. but but all about that voice, you know. Oh, I mean, yeah, I and voice. it comes from deep inside him. Yeah, I mean, he, I just saw it because I follow him on social media. And he was just in India. Yeah, I mean, he's right alongside some pretty esteemed yogi masters. And, yeah. Oh, I'm sure he has. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he has. Yeah. Well, and one of my teachers, uh, she owned Love Yoga for a while. Carla was um, the guitarist for Blondie. Yeah. So it's not because that, when, you know, if you are that in tune to feel music in you, right? it's very aligned with, with the practice. It's the practice. Yeah. How's your arms? How are your arms? They're good. Yeah. Is it? I don't know what it is. Do you have room?